trying to teach you some English for the next 14 days. This is the hope we have that you stay home and by staying home, you will stay safe. Okay, so I'll do my best to teach you something useful that you can use as soon as you can travel, all right? So yesterday we discussed two important things, how to use the simple present and how to use the present continuous, their differences and so on. Was anyone here that had any doubt about what we talked about yesterday? By clicking in the chat box below, there's like a bubble below. You can ask me if you have any question about yesterday or if I can just go on and start today's class. Actually, I think today's class is going to be very useful, but in a certain way, easier than yesterday. And I'm trying to keep the pace of my voice as slow as possible usually i don't talk like that but i'll try to do it is that okay the way i'm talking or can i speed up a little bit just let me know if it's okay if you can understand me and if we can start come on guys let's all participate just tell me yes go ahead something like this i want to see your chatting monique just said it's okay to go Guys, okay. okay, okay, Roberto said okay. Awesome, thank you. Oh, all right, Erica, thanks for sharing. Okay, okay, thanks, okay, Scotty. okay, so Roberto, let's go. Carry on. All right, so let me share with you my, okay, share screen, that's it, okay, okay. One minute and it's going to be ready. Okay, there are two more people here. Bruna and Julia are just coming in. And Alini. Okay, welcome you all. We are just going to start a class. So, as we saw yesterday, this is what we'll be talking about today. The correct order on how to make affirmative sentences, questions, negative sentences, questions with question words, examples of questions, the use of the indefinite articles, A or N, and many exceptions that exist, and also more exercise for you to study. And as I promised, here you have the answers to all the exercises that were given yesterday, okay? So without any further ado, let's go to the first part and let's, okay, most important as it says here, oh, stay home, stay home, prepare yourself for your program at home, stay safe, okay? All right. So yesterday we were talking about the use of the simple present and we saw that the simple present is used to talk about habitual actions. I didn't go into lots of details, but I gave some examples. Today we are going to explain further. So if you look at examples you have here, like right here, oh, okay. The correct order of a sentence in English is like this, subject always. In Portuguese, it is possible to have many sentences without a subject. That's because verbs are conjugated. So when you start a verb, a sentence, I mean, with a verb, everybody understands who we're talking about. But that's not the case in English. In English, if you don't say I, you, he, or she, people might get confused. So I always need a subject first, then I need a verb, and sometimes I need a complement, which can be a time expression, a place expression. It can be many things, okay? But I, it's not necessary to have a complement. If I ask you, how do you go to work? And you say, a walk, that's it. You can stop right there. So you can have just the subject and the verb, but it could not say walk. You need to say, I 
walk, okay? So if you observe here, I have like, you were an engineer. He lives in a nice house. They are students. She's a medical doctor. She works in a private hospital. You play basketball well. I underlined certain words and a, a, a. And that's because I want to talk about them. That's another difference that exists between Portuguese and English. And I think it's important to talk about that. In Portuguese, if I ask you, what do you do? You might say, sou engenheiro, sou professor, sou um executivo, or something like that. In English, every time you talk about your occupation, you are supposed to use an engineer, a teacher, an executive, or something like that. Okay, it's mandatory to use a or an before all singular nouns that are countable. There is an entire part about this down below. So I don't want to go into details now. Just remember that you have to use that. So there are many people here. I don't know what you do. Is it possible that you just write a sentence? Tell me what you do. Like, I'm an engineer but actually I work as a teacher. How about you? What do you do? Can you just write in the chat box? What do you do? Using A or N, don't forget that. Come on, first five we'll read. The others we'll forget about. Come on, time is money, let's go. Do we have any engineer here, guys? Any doctor? Developer, there you go. We have one, I'm a teacher. Okay. And then a different person said, I am a salesperson. Great. Okay. Good, good, good. What else? I am a web developer. Wow. Great. Okay. Good job. What else? I am a bank. You are a bank or a banker? Banker. Or a bank clerk? Okay. In work at the bank, correct? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So, yeah. So you could say I'm a bank clerk. C L E R K. Clerk. A bank clerk. Awesome. We just have a financial. I am a finance manager. Oh, very good. Yep. Okay. So maybe you can sponsor this class. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, thank you very much for sharing. Thanks for sharing, let's guys. Go, let's go to the next part. Let's follow. Come on. Now, as I told you yesterday, in Portuguese, when you want to ask a question, the only thing you got to do is raise your voice at the end of a sentence. Like, you are a financial executive? That is a question in Portuguese, like, wow, you are a teacher. But in English, by raising your voice like this, it doesn't make the sentence, the affirmative sentence, a question. So when I want to ask a question in English, what am I supposed to do? Look here, up. the word order in questions. First, I'm supposed to use the auxiliary verb. It can be the verb to be, it can be do, does, or did, or can, or will, or should, or must. We'll be talking about all of them. Then I use the subject and then the complement. So as you can see here, I have a few questions like, are you an engineer? You see, now the voice goes up, but the verb is placed in front. Are you an engineer? This is what is called in English a yes or no question because it's only possible to say yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Do, does he live in a nice house? Yes, he does, or no, he doesn't. Are they students? Yes, they are, or no, they aren't. Is she a medical doctor? Yes, 
she is, or no, she isn't. Does she work in a private hospital? Yes, yeah, she does, or no, she doesn't. Do you play basketball? Yes, I do, or no, I don't. As I said, these are yes or no questions. Every time I ask you a question, starting with do, does, for he, she, and it, or are you, I just want to hear a yes or no. That's it. If you don't compliment, it's not a problem. What I'm expecting is a yes or no. It's just like when you arrive in the US or Canada, they always say, are you here on vacation? They don't want, well, I blah, blah, blah. They only want you to say, yes, I am, or no, I'm here on business. Okay, that's it. No problem about here, I'll go to the next part. Roberto, so, just before you move forward, I apologize, yeah. I forgot to give uh, one other example from Erica. She's a human resources coordinator. Oh, I okay. Erica, it was too many chat popping up, you know, and, and then we have one from Alini, which is she, I am a statistician. Stat statistician. I don't it, thank you. Yes. It, it, it's almost a, how do you, do you say that word? In, in, in English, travalingua. is a tongue twister. Tongue twister. So it's almost a tongue twister. <laughs> okay. But I think the human resource is a very important person to have here because by the end of this, a lot of people will be looking for her <laughs> to ask for a job. Good. Okay. okay. Anyway, uh, in Portuguese, uh, in order to make a negative sentence, Usually we use only no, okay? I'm not these or not that, similar in English. So here you have the word order in negative sentences. I, again, I have the subject, then I have the auxiliary verb right here, okay? Then I have not, which can be contracted or not, and a complement. For instance, you're not, an engineer, or you aren't an engineer. Yesterday, we talked about these. Uh, somebody asked if there is a difference. Well, both sentences, you aren't or you're not, are the same, they're negative sentences. But there is a difference in meaning. If you want to emphasize the negative, never use the contraction, like, what is Mary doing here? She's not a doctor. You see, I want to emphasize the fact that she is not a doctor. It's different of she's not a doctor, she's a nurse. In this case, I'm just telling you that she's not a doctor, she's a nurse. But in the first case, no. All right, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. All of them are possible, all of them are negative. Now, what happens when I want to know more than simply a yes or no? So I'm going to ask a WH question or a question using a question word. So in this case, I'm here in number four now. It's gonna be like this, the word order. First, I start with the question word, which can be who, what, where, when, how, okay, why, many others. There are some examples below. Then I need to use the auxiliary verb, then the subject, and then the complement, okay? There is one very important exception to this word order. If you want to ask a question about the subject of the sentence, you never use the auxiliary verb. It's not necessary. For instance, John lives in that house. If I want to know the name of the person that lives in that house, it's John. It is only necessary to substitute to replace John by who and copy the rest, like who lives in that house. If the subject is not a person, if it's an object, it's a thing, 
like my car broke down and i want to know what i simply say what broke down my car there are examples here let's take a look and i'm sure you can understand so do you live here you see that's a yes or no yes i do or no i don't those are the only two possible and common responses but sometimes i want to know more than yes or no i want to know who i want to know what observe that there is a little difference in accent between american english and british english americans usually say who what where when why how british people don't say this why they say why what when okay it's not like there is an r at the beginning but the accent is not really important both can understand each other this is the important thing so look here at the examples i'm trying to show you like paul works in a bank how about you where that's the question word do that's the auxiliary verb you work many people simply say where you work that's not correct in order to make it a question i need the auxiliary verb in front of the subject if it's verb to be i need it here in front like where is mary she's at home she's in the hospital okay like they are online to study english they are online to study english why are they online to study english daddy goes to work daddy goes i'm sorry it's missing to work here okay i forgot mary goes to work by bus how does ted go to work here's okay but here i forgot john and mary this is the example i wanted you to pay attention to please john and mary live in that big house on the top of the mountain i want to discover the name of the rich people that live in that big house at the top of the mountain that is john and mary okay observe that john and mary they're people so if i want to ask a question about a subject person or people too i need to use who but who is always considered third person singular which means that even though the answer is john and mary the question goes to the singular the question should always be who lives in that big house on the top of the mountain if you're visiting a company and you see a beautiful office you can say who works in that office who drives that maserati in front of the the company who drives who works who lives always like that and here note that the verb in the affirmative sentence is in the plural john and mary but when you ask who to discover the subject person who is considered third person singular which means that you have to use the verb in the third person singular who lives and it's not necessary to use do or does okay this is only when you are asking about the subject if i say john lives with mary if i want to discover the name of the person that john lives with mary is not the subject so in this case i need to say who does john live with okay or like i went to sao paulo yesterday who did you go with okay oh john uh goes to sao paulo every week who goes to sao paulo every week in this case it's not necessary do or does because the question is about john uh changing a little bit here if you look at the next example i have here uh, that big printer goes on that table over there 
that big printer is a thing, it's an object, goes on that table over there. So if I want to discover what, I simply say, what goes on that table over there? That big printer, okay? Let's move on. Any question here? Please let me know if you understand this. I give one minute for you to ask me any questions. Come on, just right there. Any questions, write in the chat, please. Or can I just No move? questions yet. No questions. Thanks, Erica. Alini, thanks. Anna, thanks. Karen, Roberto, I think we're good to go. Good. Thank Pay you. Pay attention here. They start work at seven. Bruno. Good. Okay, they start work at seven. When do they start work? Or I can also ask what time do they start work? Okay, then at the end of it, you have a lot of more exercise that you can study. Let me move to the next topic. I told you at the beginning that I would be talking about the use of the indefinite article A or M. This is the same of one, but Brazilians usually say, I have one brother. In English, you don't usually say that. You just say, I have a brother or I have a sister. I have a wife, okay? I have a granddaughter. Her name is Alice, okay? So we always use A or N before singular count nouns. This is the most important thing. What is a count noun? Anything that you can put your eyes on and count, like, for example, computers. I can look here and I can see one, two computers, one TV, one, two, three, four, five, six books. So if you can look and count, it's countable. If it's countable, you should use A or N when you have only one, okay? Not one, like I have one book. No, I have a book, all right? R Roberto, now, I'm sorry, yes. sorry to interrupt. Uh, one of our students uh, is still not clear for them. Can you just go through again? Uh, what is the meaning of noun? And then uh, what do you have just, uh, explain to them again. Sorry. Okay. Noun is a category of a word which is possible to be touched, like a bus, a cat, a dog. These are nouns. Okay. Like if you have a dog in your house, I can ask you, how many dogs do you have? And you can count. I have one dog, two dogs, three dogs, four dogs, five dogs. A cat, one, two, three, four, five cats. So cat, dog, all kinds of fruits, they are nouns in English, okay? And if you can count them, one, two, three, four, when you have only one, it is mandatory to use A or N. And then we'll discuss the difference between A or N. But you have to use A or N. So if you observe, the, was it clear? Did you understand what is the noun or not yet? Whoever asked it me. Bruno, can you double check that, please? Yes, sure. Bear with me one minute, please. I will just send her a private message. I think we can go, and then if she has any doubts, I will try to explain okay. to her directly. Okay, please. So, if you look here, uh, I've heard many people telling me that A should be used before words that begin with a consonant, and N should be used before words that begin with a vowel. This is not entirely true. This is partially true. The thing is, the indefinite article 
A is used before consonant sound. Sound. What is important is not the letter here in front. Is the sound of it. When I say like bus, b, 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 the sound is letter B. B is a consonant. So I say a bus. There is a bus from here to the train station. Cat, cat, cat. See the sound? Cat, cat. It's a consonant sound. So I say a cat. Dog dog a dog but if you look at the other words here apple apple you see this is a vowel sound not a consonant so we don't say a apple can you notice that it's even awkward to say oh i have a computer it's a apple a apple the idea of using an is to make a more natural sound. Oh, it's an apple, an apple, an apple. You just pronounce together, not an apple. You say an apple. Like, wow, that's an elephant. Or there is an insect. Okay, an insect. I need an umbrella to go out. It's raining okay it's an orange you see all these words start with the vowel but not only the letter is important as i said what is important is the sound of the word okay and then if you see here in the yellow it's been already highlighted for you Abbreviations set as individual letters, which begin with A, E, F, H, I, L, M, N, O, R, S, or X, are pronounced as vowel sounds. For example, they are therefore preceded by N rather than A. There is a, he's an NGF, an NGF rep. Okay, she's an F, an FBI agent. You can say F, F, that is a consonant, but the sound, an F, F, you see, an FBI agent. Okay, so we say an FBI agent, not a F. Sometimes I always tell my students, if you are not sure if you use A or N, Try to pronounce it aloud. Say it in a loud voice. If the sound is yeah, awkward, it's wrong for sure. Like uh, she's a uh, uh, FBI, a uh, FBI. You see, isn't it easier to say an FBI, an FBI? Okay. But there are the other letters that are not listed here. Okay, like CIA, we say a CIA agent or a DTP affiliate. Give me an age. H is here in the list. Give me an E. Give me an L. Give me an L. Give me an O. What have we got? The word hello. Okay, any problem about this? If you have no problem, I'll go to the exceptions. Any problem, Bruno? Please let me know right in the chat if you understood or not. We, we don't have anything yet. Good. Guys, That's feel good. free to send us questions, even yeah. during Roberto explanation, okay? And then I can wrap up. And then once Roberto asks for the questions, uh, we already have all the questions. And then I, I can just uh, uh, read to read all the questions to him okay yeah because if you don't ask me i'll be just going on and on and on and then by the end of the class you're going to be confused so i prefer you just say stop can you say that again and i'll do it again okay i think so that for now we're good carry on okay observe this part here please 
Sound and spelling do not always coincide. If the sound is really consonant, for example, one and unit, they begin with vowels, but the initial sound are those of the consonants W and Y in one and the U. So that's why we say a unit, not an unit. You see, it's even hard to say an unit. For instance, a university. Try to say an university and pronounce together. See if the sound is good. Like she studies in an university, an university. Is it natural for you? Because for me, it's very awkward. So she studies in a university in Berlin. So all these words like a utility, a useful thing, a unique object, European car, like BMW is not a Brazilian car, it's a European, European car, okay? It's a one-time thing or it's a one-eyed dog, okay? The dog lost the other eye, okay? And we also have exceptions for an. There are many words in English that in spite of starting with the letter H, the H is silent, it's not pronounced. Like honor, like our, air, honest man, you see? All these words, in spite of having the letter H, the age is silent. So it's an honor to meet you, sir. An hour ago, again, if you don't know and you say a hour, observe how strange, yeah? A hour ago, okay? He is a honest, a honest. Sounds terrible, okay? But sometimes the age is pronounced like horse, house, hat. So we say a horse a house and a hat, only when it's in the singular, of course, because A or N means one. So if you have two horses, you say they are beautiful horses. If you have only one, you can say it is a beautiful horse, okay? Now, only to put an end at this point, uh, do you guys know what means accent? Accent is not those stress marks that we put in words in Portuguese. Accent is the way that you talk. Like when you go to the US and you listen to somebody from New York speaking, he has a certain accent. If you go to Boston, you are going to notice that the accent is different. It's just like Portuguese from Brazil, Portuguese from Portugal. It's the same language, but the accent is totally different, okay? Or even in Brazil, if you go to the south of Brazil, you will listen to people talking in a certain way. And if you go to the north or the northwestern or northeastern part of Brazil, they will have a different accent. And because of this, what happens? Certain accents do not pronounce the letter age in hotel or even hostel okay it's kind of aspirated so if you ever go to any country like a certain place in ireland or scotland and you listen to somebody a native speaker of english saying a hotel it's okay because he doesn't pronounce the age so that's what we have here the correct would be to say a hotel, but many people will possibly say a hotel. There is a hotel downtown or hostel, an hostel, an hostel. I've heard both. So it depends on where you are. South Africa, New Zealand, India, Australia. There are so many different countries that have English as an official language. And in each one of them, the accent is different. So it's possible to have certain 
variations. Okay, I will stop for one minute to see if you have any question. If you have any question, please click in the chat box and let me know if you have any question concerning what has been explained so far. Okay. No questions, no questions. Awesome. I think we're good, Roberto. Wow. I thought I was giving a basic class. This is so good. I'm proud of you guys, okay? So if you have no questions, I have some for you. Okay. I have a couple exercises here. For instance, they go to the club every Saturday. Can anyone there just please give me the interrogative form for this affirmative statement? Can you just write as fast as possible? What is the interrogative form for this? They go to the club every Saturday. That's an affirmative statement in the simple present. I need a question. What's the question, please? Have we got an answer? Not yet, boss. Thinking, thinking too much. Come on, guys. We, this we has got to be one. fast. We got one. Do they, it. do they go to the club every Saturday? Thank you for sharing and sharing it nicely. That's correct. Good job, see, Erica. It's so simple. A, a typical Brazilian would probably say, oh, they go to the club every Saturday. But that's not a question. That's just an affirmative statement with a wrong intonation. You want to change this into a question. Look at the verb. Verb is in the present. Just place do and copy the rest. Do they go? That's a question. You like caipirinha. That's an affirmative statement. Just say, do you like? You changed into a question. It's simple. As simple as that. And what would be the negative for this? You use the do to make the question. What would be the negative statement? I think we have another answer and a correct one. They don't go to the club every Saturday. Just made my day. Thank Spot you very on. much. Good okay. job, Erika. Good, good. Erika, excellent job. Let's go on. Okay, uh, let me choose another one here. She always gets up at six. What would be the interrogative form for this, please? Come on, everyone, or is just Erica in the classroom right now? Guys, if you don't want to send a message to everyone, you can send the message directly to me, and I will read it without saying your name, okay? That way you guys won't be shy to share. Feel free to do that. You're right? here to learn. You cannot exactly. be shy. Exactly. Okay? Uh, there you go. We have one answer here. Uh, do they work very hard every week? That's excellent. But that's for number six. I asked it about number seven. She <laughs> always gets up at six. And that's right again. It, it was right. Okay. No worries. How about number seven now? Six was perfect. How about number seven? Do we have a correct answer for number seven? Not yet, Roberto. There you go. Uh, we have one here. Uh, does she always get up at 6 a.m.? Very good. Two important things. Good job. Subject is she. We saw yesterday that when you have he, she, and it, it is necessary to add S, E, S, or I, E, S to the verb. If you didn't catch yesterday's class, we have both the class recorded and the material. You can ask Bruno for assistance to download that. Do that was used in the first one, do they work, ends in O, 
do. So because of she, it is necessary to add the ES. Do becomes does. Observe that the sound, the final sound is not does. It's does. Z. Does she always? I added ES at the beginning. So it's not necessary to preserve the S here. So it does she always get up at six. All right. And the negative obviously would be she doesn't always get up at six. Okay. Good. Uh, Roberto, questions? shall we do yes. question six then? <laughs> six? Yes, because then we, we already have the answer here. Okay, so think about number six. They work very hard every week. We already have okay. one answer. What would that be? Do they work very hard every week? Yes, excellent. Whoever answered that, as I said, for I, you, we, you plural, and they. You want to ask a question in the, pre in the present? Simply ask do in front and copy the rest. Do they work very hard every week? And the negative is they don't work very hard every week. Okay? Please, let me move on to the next exercise, which is a little more interesting and might be a little more tricky. Roberto, we will, ask we will need to questions. speed up. A little bit, okay? We, we have an extra okay. five minutes. I will do it. All right? Thank okay, you. just to one example here. Ask questions using who, what, where, what time, or when, or why, or any other WH question that you think is necessary about the underlying words. I have here, Susan works near school. Both Susan and near school have been underlined. It is possible to ask two questions about this sentence. One about Susan, which is the subject, and one about near school. Can anyone please give me the correct answer to discover the name of the person that works near school, please? Come on, we have less than five minutes. We already have one answer here, it's who? works excellent who works near school as i told you the question is about susan there is no need for do does or did so who works near school what about the second i want to know the answer is near school i want to know where susan works what's the question come on guys we are running out of time. Any possible we, answers? We have here, we just got one here. Where does Susan work? Excellent. Where, that's the correct question word because it asks about location. The verb is in the present, so I need to say where does Susan, work. Excellent. As you can see, you have a few more examples here. And the next page, you have more exercises to complete with A or N. We don't have time to go over, but you can study. For instance, Mary is receptionist in hotel downtown. You're supposed to complete if necessary. If not, just write slash, slash, slash. Okay? Sometimes you don't need to use because if the word is plural, if the word is not countable, you don't use it. So try to do it. And last but not least, you have the answers for the exercise I gave you yesterday. Like she never goes to work by car. We understand the lesson now. So please guys, uh, we are running out of time. I hope you were able to learn at least a little bit today because if you learn a little bit every day, by the end of two weeks, you will have achieved some 
good knowledge of English, or at least enough for you to go or to reach your final destination, okay? Whichever it is in anywhere in the country, in the world, I mean. So, Roberto, it was, I, yes. I'm sorry, I just had one, one, one thought just came through my mind right now. Uh, maybe a good idea would be for us to prepare a survival English class. What do you reckon? I can do that, that's easy, okay? The thing is, I just wanted to give them a foundation. Perfect. So they would be able to construct sentence and not awesome. uh, talk like Tarzan, me Tarzan, okay? Me tourist, no. After that, we can, of course, my idea is before we end this basic, we just have a survival English, how to go through immigration, how to get a taxi or a shuttle or things like that. Okay. Awesome. Thank awesome. you very Roberto, much. For... We just have one answer, one question in here. Okay. The okay. student asked it directly to me. So uh, she's asking, is it correct to say what time does she to get up? No. Why is not possible to say that? What time does she to? We never use the to prior to a verb. Only when we have two verbs, like she needs to get up at six. Then it would be okay to say what time does she need to get up? But does she to get up? Uh, no. Just like saying I to get up. Do you talk like that or you simply say I get up? Okay. I hope I have answered your yes, question. Yes, you replied with the answer. Guys, so just okay. to wrap up, I have sent you a link from the Google Forms. We really need your help to evaluate this class, okay? As we mentioned yesterday, Roberto is an amazing teacher, a superstar, but it's the first time that him and us, uh, that, that we are both doing something together in a 100% online class, okay? So if you can give us your feedback, it will be great. So you can, we can learn from our mistakes and even improve to provide you guys an amazing class, an amazing experience, okay? I have just help sent us. in the chat. Yes, help us so we can help you, okay? Exactly. All right. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, and see you all tomorrow, okay? Don't forget us. Okay. Same time. Same time, okay? Bye for now. Stay home, stay safe. See you tomorrow. And please, do the exercise, all right? Bye-bye.